your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We are focusing in on a very um, interesting and I would say very, uh, very consistent aspect in narcissism and that is really a narcissist's obsession or preoccupation with how others perceive them. The narcissist is always looking at themselves from the outside in. It's as if they're always in the mirror. Um, and others are the mirror and they're trying to control the reflection that others um, might have of them. So they're always trying to engage in a lot of persona management, public image management, um, just facade management, persona management, the facade, the mask, the public persona, which is the outside shell, you know, the outer life, really sort of the controlling the reactions of others. But if you know, anything about really psychology and the inner life is that oftentimes the inner life is just that it, it emanates from within the root word of education is educari to bring out so really you know to educate and to really sort of um, feed somebody is really from that inner life um, you really need to have that experience of pulling out which is the natural organic talents, viewpoints, perspective, emotions, accumulation of experiences, which is your best teacher, experience is the best teacher. And so oftentimes the facade really is like a barrier or really a um, device that is meant to separate and create a chasm or a wedge or a riff, like a blockade between themselves and really experiencing life. Um, and so, you know, you, you know, the, it's the old, you know, the chip on the shoulder aspect. Um, it's the, you know, um, it's the, uh, wanting to be all about titles and not about substance, you know, all about style, not about substance. Um, you know, it's all about people use the exp expression fluff. It's all a lot of fluff, um, without, you know, real content yet. Um, you know, that's really what they believe in. That's their operatus motorandi is really trying to control the perception that others have of them. And um, as I say, it must be exhausting, you know, um, it must be very uh, difficult to engage in that because to try to constantly control and get others to um, follow you in that way has got to be uh, very difficult. But I think it's, it's very, it becomes very natural for a narcissist because they're always trying to protect their, um, their inner life, which oftentimes is rooted from feeling very insecure you know, contradictory to their outer shell, in, inside they do feel very um, insecure. They do feel um, very inadequate. They do feel very inferior. They do have a root of shame, which is, you know, really a very strong feeling of embarrassment or lack of, of being able to show face, um, you know, and save face. So in order to save face, they create an external face with which they, you know, you hear about the term, the mask, the facade, the persona, the union, you know, uh, things of that nature. You know, it's it's been studied in psychology. You know, the Freud, the great psychoanalyst, you know, talks about the defense mechanisms that the ego will create in order to protect itself, the id. You know, um, there, there's just so much to that. But especially in now, you know, day and age, um, and, you know, we're well into the 21st century, and, you know, there's so much that has to do with this in kind of the narcissistic movement. I mean, the selfies, the me, 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 um, you know, it really does tend to perpetuate that fostering of an outer life versus an inner life. And, you know, people selfling themselves to death to the point where, you know, you wonder if people can really even have relationships or touch anymore. Um, you know, that everything has this interface. Um, and so... Um, um, you know, going with that is really that, um, you know, this persona management makes them very sensitive to criticism or input of others. So they will oftentimes, um, um, you know, other sort of comments that are made to them, any sort of, um, you know, comments or put downs or criticism, they will deflect very uh, right away. They will uh, lash out at it. And um, they oftentimes work very hard to dispel that. Um, you know, I know a lot of musicians feel this way. I mean, it's just their talent to be like the front man or, you know, the piano player. Um, you know, and so any sort of attack to that, they, they take very seriously and are very sensitive 
versus having the security to know, okay, you're going to have com you know, you're going to have comments, you're going to have input, um, but that doesn't shake me. You know, I I'm rooted and grounded in love and self acceptance and trust and belief, and I unfold from there. Versus, you know, I'm trying to always manage my persona on the outside, and if I do, you know, if I seem less than human, you know, people won't love me. And so, I mean, you know, I'm just thinking it's bringing to light here, um, Jennifer Lawrence, you know, who is just an amazing actress. Now there's fans of hers or not fans, but, you know, she's one of those people who I think, you know, she really lives from the inside and, you know, she, you know, there's been um, awards where she's, you know, fallen in her big gown and dress, but people love her even more, but because she's just herself, you know, she's raw, she's uninhibited in that way. And she doesn't have to be all about the persona management like you see in the Hollywood or the movies or things like that. And the narcissist oftentimes is in that same vein, very caught up in their appearance, very caught up in the outer shell, but yet there's an inner life that needs to fuse, it needs to come together. Um, and, you know, um, so this hypersensitivity often results in this sarcast, you know, sarcasm and oftentimes leads them to ridicule and humiliate others. So it's kind of like, I interpret it that they're always trying to beat somebody to the punch. Before, you know, you can punch out, before you can make a, just a general comment, they're going to punch you out and make you suffer and get you down so that you're, you know, trying to feel the hurt and you're not able to respond and be in like footing with them in the relationship. So um, this is oftentimes um, experienced and oftentimes tolerated in narcissistic relationships. And um, this is oftentimes due to just that, really that obsessive sort of care and, and control of, of how others view them as so significant and so important versus having that internal life, being, being genuine, having that balance, um, which I think is very crucial to have that honesty that, you know, bearing your soul, being able to bear your emotions, being able to know that you're acceptable, lovable for who you are and all that you feel and that your, your emotions of worry, concern, you know, can be worked through and processed and that you shouldn't feel ashamed for that, but that you should realize that, it, you know, that's part of the human condition. It's part of the human spectrum. And to try to push that down and stifle it down to the point where, you know, you're like a, uh, you know, a, uh, a statue or a pillar or, you know, this um, mosaic that doesn't have any feelings is really, you know, part of that inflated sense of grandiosity and that idealization of, of life versus the reality of life. So that's why you see, you know, the idealized romantic relationships versus the real relationships and, and what they are really all about. And so, you know, I think oftentimes that idealization phase when it moves into, you know, the, um, you know, the devaluing and the discarding, it's like, you're human, you know, you have a, human emotions, you know, you get sick you know, you have questions, you know, you um, want to have discussion, you want to talk about some important poem that I don't know anything about, and I have to be in the one of control of all the emotions all the time. Boom, ridicule, boom, you know, uh, humiliation, boom, sarcasm, boom, look at you, you have a flaw about you, and then they're just going to pound on it and peck on it. And I just think of the, you know, the pecking order of a chicken, where they're trying to I think there's a, a statement about that where, you know, the, the uh, chicken will kind of look for the weakest one and look for that little bit of blood and just keep hitting and, and, and trying to, you know, really sort of um, exasperate a wound. And that becomes a very sort of um, obstinate and stubborn, very resistant to change behavior in narcissists and why it becomes so painful to be around them because they're just going to keep, just keep hanging this, this wound over you just so they can keep re re-injuring re-injuring and re-injuring to keep any sort of humiliation and shame off of them so they can deflect it boom i'm perfect and then look at you you're the one with all the problems then the scapegoating the triangulation you know the the story from there so i hope this video helps peace and harmony with you here today please share and please subscribe for more great tools videos discussion and support